Hi, Lonnie Vaughn from Emotiva Audio here. Today we're going to talk a little bit about inverted and non-inverted signals because oftentimes it's a difficult concept for a lot of people to grasp what that means, how it affects things, and in general, does it really matter? Well, the simple answer to that is in most cases, depending upon what's being inverted or where, it oftentimes doesn't matter. In certain cases it does. We're going to get into a little bit of both. To start off with, let me just give you a rundown of what we got going on here. So we got our audio precision test piece here. It's generating out a test tone. Just sending out a constant sine wave into our amplifier. It doesn't matter whether it's this amp or any other amp. Just This one was handy and it was lightweight. I didn't feel like bringing one of the big ones in. <laughs> so you got an amp coming in. We got signal going into the amp. The output of the amp is feeding back into our audio precision and we can see what's going on here. Here's our sine wave, putting in 100 hertz right at the moment. So if you notice, sine wave starts at zero, and then it starts to climb, and then it goes back to zero, and it goes negative, comes back to zero, goes positive, so forth and so on. That's a typical AC sine wave as in music. If this was music, it would actually be a very complex waveform, but it would still follow the same thing that you're seeing here. Now, Inverted. This is a non-inverted signal. If something's inverted, what does that mean? Essentially, what that means is one of them is flipped. One of the phases flipped. Now, if you look at the audio precision, you'll see one channel is still non-inverted here. The other channel is inverted. So instead of it starting upwards, now it's starting downward. Okay? From an, acoustic, from an acoustic standpoint, if you have one channel out of phase, what you're going to actually hear is the bass is going to go pretty much go away in your room. Um, the, the mids and the highs are going to sound muddy and just diffuse. They're not going to be focused to a certain point. So if you're dealing with that in your room, check the polarity of all your speakers. Check the polarity of all your cables. Make sure that things are in phase. Now, when I say in phase, that doesn't necessarily mean positive to positive, negative to negative. That's referred to absolute phase, okay? There's absolute phase and relative phase. Here's the difference. You notice I got this one is inverted, right? Because I got it wired out of phase. What happens if I do both sides? So now both sides are actually wired backwards, more along the lines of relative phase. Now what does relative phase mean? Look at our AP again. Now they're both doing the same thing. So it doesn't matter whether they're all wired, you know, positive, positive, negative, negative, or whether they're all wired the opposite way, just so long as they're all wired consistently so that things stay relative to what they are. Now what does that do to your speaker? Actually, it doesn't do anything, and I'm going to show you why as soon as I find a marker. All right, so let's take a look at a speaker. What do we got? Well, let's start with the voice coil. So here's our wonderful little voice coil. That's attached to your cone. You got a nice little surround at the top, dust cap, all that wonderful stuff. Here's your top plate. Then you got your magnet. And your bottom plate. All right. You notice the top plate is centered in the voice coil. Okay? Now, if this was traditional phase, normal phase, then what would happen is let's say this is our resting point center, or electrically, zero, okay? It would actually cause the speaker initially to push forward until it reached whatever this amplitude level is. At that point, it's then going to draw back an equal distance to the negative side for the bottom side of the sine wave, and then it's gonna return back to its resting point at zero, or dead center. 
Now, if it's inverted, then what do you get? If it's inverted, it simply draws back initially, then it pushes forward equal distance, and then it returns back to its resting point at zero. Okay? What does that actually sound like to you, the listener? It sounds exactly the same because just like relative phase here, they're all doing the same thing. The audio signal is still just as pure as it was either way. The speaker doesn't care because it's starting at zero and it's just moving an equal distance, okay? It's creating a pressure wave front that starts, like this part, starts pushing out at a certain time. And there's your wave front. As it draws back, slightly later, lagging behind, it starts creating a secondary wave front, okay? And that's how it creates, to our ears, a sine wave. Now, if it's inverted, this same action still happens. So when it gets to our ears, it's still just a sine wave. So it sounds exactly the same. I know a lot of people are saying, you know, I've heard people say it all the time about if this is inverted or that's inverted or whatever, you know, does it make a difference? No, it doesn't make it a difference provided they're all relatively the same to each other. So hopefully that helps explain a few things about phase and time. Thank you for watching. This is Lonnie Vaughn signing off.